Bible study for everybody reconvened on the 13th of January and picked up with John chapter 4. We went through verses 1 to 26, which contained the story of Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman about a drink of water at the well. This is kind of a continuation of how people came to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. In the earlier chapters, we saw that uh, John the Baptist pointed some that way. He pointed uh, John and Andrew that way. John and Andrew went and got their brothers and said, come and see this guy. And Jesus called Philip. Philip went and got Nathaniel. Uh, to, today, we're going to talk about the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman, which is really a remarkable story. And we'll start with some background about who were the Samaritans. First of all, you can see that Samaria in Jesus' time was located right here. And in order to go from Jerusalem in the Judea area, which is where they, he and his disciples were, up to the Galilee area, which is where they were headed, which is about 70 miles, by the way, um, they had the choice of either going right through Samaria or taking the route that would bypass Samaria, which is usually what Jews did back in those days, because this rift between the Samarians and the, and the Jewish people, the Jews, was a severe rift. Um, Here's a little background. In the time of Saul, the kingdom looked like this. David expanded it to the darker brown area, and this green area is the way the kingdom of Israel looked, or the United Kingdom looked under uh, Solomon's reign. Following Solomon's reign, however, the kingdom split into two parts, the southern kingdom, which was called Judea, or the kingdom of Judah, and the northern kingdom, kingdom, which was the kingdom of Israel, uh, which was composed of ten tribes, and uh, the southern kingdom was composed of two tribes. Um, here's quickly a map uh, of uh, Israel presently. Um, you can see that uh, the, here's Jerusalem where they, the, Jesus and his disciples were. They wanted to go to the Galilean area, which is up here. Nowadays, this is the West Bank, which is uh, Palestinian-controlled. Here's the Gaza Strip, and up in this area are the Golan Heights. In a modern map, where Jesus stopped at the well is called Nablus, or N-A-B-U-L-U-S on some maps. Uh, this is the area that it was in between Jerusalem down here and Nazareth up here. And so this is the area. Sychar is the name of the city in most of your translations. Uh, it's right here. Jacob's Well is right in this area. It's still there today, they tell me. Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal were uh, prominent in the Old Testament. You can read about them in Kings and Judges. Uh, but this was the Syrian area, or the, the uh, Samaritan area up here. And uh, the, w the way the Samaritan there, when the, when the kingdom split into the northern and southern kingdoms, um, the, uh, this northern kingdom was eventually overrun by the Assyrians in about 722 or 727 B.C., the Assyrians conquered this area. They moved the Jews out of it, for the most part, left some there, and they moved a bunch of other people into there to settle the area. And the Jews and the um, Gentiles, the others who were moved in by the Assyrians to settle the area, intermarried. Uh, and so the, uh, the Samaritans were... Um, like mongrels, and very looked down on by the uh, Jews. Uh, well, Pharisees in that time were known to pray. Uh, Pharisees believed in the resurrection. And they were known to pray that the Samaritans would not be resurrected. So it was a very uh, severe divide. Um, the Jews had nothing to do with those people, and to use anything or touch anything or even 
touch them or be around them would make a Jew unclean. So this is very remarkable that they stop there. The disciples go off to get some food, and Jesus asks this woman who comes to the well for water. And then they go through the conversation uh, where Jesus leads her by his questions to um, admit that she's a um, uh, sinner. She, she's had five husbands. Uh, the man she's living with is not her husband. She admits all this to Jesus. Uh, and he questions her in a very um, uh, unjudgmental way. Uh, open kind of way, which is a good model for any of us to use when we are in discussions over our faith. Uh, he didn't scold her. He didn't lecture her. He didn't tell her she was uh, living a, a sinful life. Or he, he just asked her questions, and she uh, came to the conclusion herself. Then she tried to change the subject, of course. You'll read in there that she wants to talk about, uh, uh, for example, religion. Uh, the Samaritans worshipped uh, on Mount Gerizim here in this area is where their temple was. The Jews, of course, had the temple done in Jerusalem. So when she says, you Jews say you should worship in Jerusalem, and we Samaritans say up here in Mount Gerizim, uh, and she's trying to divert the conversation from herself uh, and uh, her um, um, the, the life that she's been living. She's an outcast. She comes to the well at noon. She doesn't come in the morning when it's cool with all the other women. She doesn't come in the evening when it's cool with all the other women. She comes in the noonday heat by herself. Uh, she is an outcast. She is the, undoubtedly the, the butt of jokes and a lot of gossip in, amongst the Samaritans. And, um, and, and in the, if you look at the 26th verse of chapter 4, because uh, then she finally says that we, the Samar this well, let me quote it to you exactly. Uh, she says, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he'll tell us all these things. Jesus says to her, I who speak to you am he. In other words, I am, I, the one speaking to you, am the Messiah. So if you've ever had somebody tell you that Jesus never claimed to be the Messiah, um, there you have a verse that you can use. Next week, we will pick up with um, uh, the rest of chapter 4, beginning on verse 27 and uh, see how Jesus continues to influence these people. We hope to see you there. God bless you.